uh, reach to us directly. So uh, the tele rehabilitation is uh, more uh, upcoming tools that we use uh, in the treatment of our patient. So uh, for the session, we have two lectures. Uh, our first lecture would be um, tele rehabilitation, pioneering the future of uh, healthcare by uh, Professor Nilmal Surya, yes, who uh, uh, he is the president elect of the uh, Indian Stroke Association and uh, AOSNR and recent vice president of the WSNR and uh, he's work at the Bombay Hospital and Medical Research Center in Mumbai. Um, but that's free hospital, uh, not called police hospital, uh, and he also have uh, many uh, uh, experience in uh, this uh, in this field. So um, please uh, give uh, please join me to welcome Professor Nirmal Surya for this uh, interesting lecture. Thank you, Chairperson. Good evening, it's the end of the day, I understand clearly. Uh, but the tele rehabilitation is something which is very, very important, and I think uh, this is something which is uh, uh, coming up in a big way. So, what is tele rehabilitation? It's to provide the neuro rehabilitation service to the patient, people, remotely to their homes or other environment using information and communication technology. Uh, you can have uh, uh, you know, improve the reach of the clinician beyond the physical wall of healthcare, and it leads to continuity of care of to the person with the disability. So, why tele neuro rehabilitation? Now, India is a country you all know that 1.42 billion, the number one populous country in the world. We have taken over China, and uh, which means that 17.6 percent of the population is in India. And there are only 4,000 neurologists with few specializing in the neuro rehabilitation. And uh, insurance will not cover the long term rehab, hence, people have to pay out of the pocket. So, what are the various factors which can help with the tele neuro rehab? One is the increase in the incidence of non communicable disease in India which is 53% uh, death are due to the NCD, 44% disability adjusted here due to NCD, 8% death, 25% disability adjusted like here due to the neurological condition. And you can see there is an increase in prevalence of neurological disorder among various other like epilepsy, headache, stroke, etc. And there are less number of neurologists and you could see that uh, Compared to the other part, how the countries with the developed and the developing country, there is a difference in the number of population and number of people. The number of rehab specialists also, if you look into the PMR, physiotherapist, speech therapist, or <coughs> in Asia is much less as been desired. Non-availability of professional neuro rehab services in the rural part, however, the 75% of our population lives in the rural area. There's a burden on family and caregiver because of various points which has been mentioned. But Government of India has come out with the Ayushman Bharat launch, which helps patients free of cost treatment up to the 5 lakh rupees. Number of smartphones in India, if you look at, they have increased tremendously. If you look online video consumption in India, which is again going to rise in 2022, it has become 77%. And if you look at average data consumption per month in India, it's 18 gigabyte in 2022. So there is a significant uh, availability of uh, mobile phone was in India. And you have seen increased digital interaction which is subtle phone increase, not only in India. Look at the Asia, Pacific, Europe, North America. There's a significant increase post-COVID. And also, increase of smartphone uses in rural India 
I'm talking of rural India, you can see that from uh, slowly if you see that uh, TV sat, which is moving on to the mobile and then smartphone. So by 2030, we believe that 70% of Indian population will have the smartphone. And see the significant change in urban versus rural area. And you can see that there is a significant shift from 60 to 75% in the rural area. So there can be technology advancement, increase availability of services, meet the need of uh, meet the need of increasing independence and compliance, and motivation and flexible schedule of the patient. So the patient need not go between ten and five; he can do at six thirty p.m. after his son come back from the office. So now we know that tele rehabilitation and digital communication is very very important. But there are problems. And what are the problems? Problem is there are inadequate human resources for neuro rehabilitation. But there are opportunities in India. There's a smart phone usage increase and there is an increased digital interaction. So what is the solution? The solution is digital rollout of neuro rehabilitation, not only in India, but developed low middle income countries. So what are the various forty of the tele rehab? If you look at the technological approach, you can have teleconsultation, telemultimodal care, telehealth care, telehome based care, uh, which can uh, lead to teletechnology aided rehabilitation like robotic, telemonitoring health, cognitive rehabilitation. All of these uh, modality can be considered as a subfield of uh, tele neuro rehab. And for India, we look at the SWOT, S-W-O-T, that is a strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. Strength is our population, 1.42 billion. Our weakness is limited health infrastructure, particularly in the rural countries. And there is opportunity because India has got technology hub, IT cities, you can name cities like Bangalore, Hyderabad, which are IT hub. And ample health startups, people are doing their own startup, making apps. And but the threat is external factor like pandemic, uh, regulatory reforms, data protections. So if you look at the opportunities in tele neuro rehab, you have neurological condition, allied services, integration, training opportunity, and which would facilitate to develop a tele neuro rehab academy. And we at WFNR should look to have a tele neuro rehab academy which can infrastructure building, design specific telemedicine platform and national wide and government training on telemedicine for doctors and allied stakeholders. So finally we think that tele rehabilitation would be the solution. What are the advantages of tele rehabilitation? So advantage is accessibility to patient in remote location. In fact we can even do from one country to another country more acceptable and affordable, reduce the budget expenditure in hospital care, rehabilitation, home environment, patient is comfortable, sitting lying in his own home, bedroom, reduces burden on healthcare workers. If a healthcare worker at uh, office or in this clinic can see 10 patients, tele rehab, he can increase the number. Indian telemedicine program is getting mature with indigenous technology system and process, and I will tell you later. A DG India mission has further strengthened the policy. The Modi government has come out with DG India and there is an Indian health delivery system going on digital which will help in future. But there are problems which are faced with the tele rehab. Large country, 1.4 popula billion population, diverse social and cultural background, multiple languages. You move to 500 kilometers and there is a change in language. Federal nature of governance where health is a state subject acting as in, in, independent for the rapid acceptance by the people. But there is a future scope of tele rehab. And what is that? Current research is variable and limited. Feasibility of tele rehab is different neurological condition need to be done. Development of optimum protocol and intervention for specific condition. Development of tele rehab software like Skype versus other. And development of tele rehab application for the patient. So these are the scope for the future. How do we strengthen our uh, tele neuro rehab services in LMIC? It can be important tool that may bridge between geographical discrepancy in availing rehab services among resource poor country. Uh, 
also useful for providing continuous rehabilitation during COVID. So COVID has given a lot of uh, confidence to many of the therapists to handle the patient through the telerehab and it is cost effective option and IFNR in particular has been advocating greater budget advocation, scaling up of technology in the healthcare system and a sector wide approach for strengthening tele-neuro rehab services not only in India but other LMIC. COVID gave us opportunity to work and then we wrote this uh, paper of tele-neuro rehabilitation during the COVID-19 pandemic with implementation of a practice in low and middle income country from the IFNR team and you can go into this paper, it is available free on the frontier which gives us the various issues and how we can tackle them. We also wrote about the tele-neurology, so what are the neurology and telemedicine, what are the way forward, how we can examine the patient, how we can look at the various problems. You can go through this paper which is from the Telemedicine Academy. So what is the neuro rehab team and what are their role if you are looking at telemedicine? So of course everybody is part of the team. Uh, you have to have internet, your patient, care network, community center, wherever they can be telepresenter. So this is what is the system which not much and the individual has to have their own uh, role so you have a dietitian nurses occupational therapy how she is going to have activities of daily living and concept in their life cognitive psychologist about the assessment and i will come back to that so all these people have their own uh, system which needs to be a protocol which needs to be followed so what are the various perspectives if you look at physiatrist perspective Continuity of treatment and care is something that TNR service could seamlessly support. Uh, assessment of basic parameters, patient and care, give education, appropriate instruction. So that's the responsibility through the television or television. You have physiotherapist perspective to evaluate the range of motion, strength, muscle tone, endurance of a person with disability through eyeballing, uh, eyeballing sometimes and it may be difficult at time but they have to adapt and also sometimes patient may not comprehend the instruction as they do it when they are present physically so this need to be uh, be very careful and go very clearly there are many apps available for the physiotherapist and this may help deliver the exercises at home and one of them is uh, exo health which is available which is a ai health the monitor of it being patient so patients are being monitored and uh, these are something which can be used adequately. Neuropsychology perspective, again you have to have evaluation, provide psychotherapy, cognitive rehab. We have been at Epilepsy Foundation doing this post-COVID and every week we are giving the patient cognitive rehab online through the tele-rehab. Interpretation of evaluation might offer a differ and may not be the same while it's carried out virtually. So again, there is some challenge which has to be and team may have to rely substantially on caregiver and patient to engage while they are cognitive different. Then we have uh, various apps again available. So cognitive rehab from mobile based app. You can see this luminosity. It's a classical. You can have uh, various uh, factors available. You have to just select and the patient can continue that. It gives you a very good idea of how the treatment can be done. So these are some of the mobile apps which are available and they can be easily uh, trained to the caregiver through the neuropsychologist. We have uh, our own local maid, Mansik, which is from India and I think Pushkar is here. Uh, he is working on, uh, which is a startup supported by the Department of Biotech, Government of India. He is working with IFNR as a support in this and this is uh, predominantly for cognitive rehabilitation or dementia rehab and the app contains brain games, physios, medicine reminder, fusing therapy, speech language therapy and feedback to your app. And we are developing more and more app for the future rehabilitation in various other like stroke. Speech and language pathologist has uh, various predominant challenges in solid assessment but use of hybrid model would also be a potential strategy uh, in neurodevelopment and acquired community disorder, dysarthria, orofaryngeal dysphagia, and communicating, uh, cognitive communicating disorder. And again, we have been doing regular 
uh, tele uh, rehabilitation every week for the speech and language strength for the patient with epilepsy for the last many years. Occupational therapists is need to do the real life, real life functional assessment and also provide immense opportunity for OT to standardize the assessment for neuro rehab in future in such cases. So everybody has its own role and these are some of the apps which has been, uh, DOCAS has written about this, they have been working at Udiana on the various um, computer game based rehab which are very, very simple. Not to forget patient and caregiver perspective in empowering the patient because this is the aspect which we are forgetting. And these are the apps which with a smartphone, all of the application, which support the <coughs> people with balance disorder, cost effective, personalized, virtual coaching, sensory technology, uh, real time monitoring of patient level of physical activity, their progress and their degree of compliance, and smartphone allow user to monitor track training plan and progress. So that helps the therapist to follow them very clearly. Care for stroke, a web-based smartphone enable education intervention for management of physical disability following stroke visibility in the Indian context by our uh, IFNR team, Suresh Kumar. And uh, care for stroke is currently under pilot testing for its visibility and with a small group of stroke survivor and we'll come back to you. Family-led rehabilitation after a stroke in India, which is an agent trial, and this study protocol is a randomized controlled trial. This, will st this was done, and uh, though the trial has not come initial significantly, but I'll come back to you for attempt two, which will start now. While we have been doing the therapy, while we are taking the patient, but we have various uh, assessment platforms which has been developed, and not from today, even much before from 2003. So these are the various virtual uh, platforms which are available for assessment uh, into the, you can go into the various of them, and uh, there can be remote assessment of neurological condition, but the latest one post-COVID are 21 and 22 article, two minute walk test, and MDS device unified Parkinson's disease rating. So these assessment can also be done online. We are getting better and better. And I remember uh, Dr. Namjo presenting Fugelmeyer assessment online. So things are getting better and better with our assessment and artificial intelligence being available. One need to have goal setting when you are doing the regular tele neuro rehabilitation and you can have the step one, step two, and step three. So you plan out the what is your goal while you are doing the treatment and you follow them up. So that's very, very important as we do it in our physical assessment and therapy in hospital or in clinic therapy. There can be synchronous telling exercises and there can be asynchronous telling exercises, uh, which uh, real time versus via any device, and there can be computer-based intervention remotely monitor and adapted offline by the therapist. And these can be, you know, through various methods, messages, video recording, email, and electronic recording. So depending on your feasibility, your comfort, you plan out. So what are the challenges in uh, stroke rehabilitation? The basic therapy like movement and strengthening could be planned. How do one deal with balance and hammy with grade one to two power? What you may find difficulty in planning the fine motor training, SLP need evaluation for swallowing training and for oromandibular exercises. Aphasia can be very well treated. Uh, cognitive training and counseling can be done with limited restriction. Orthotic needs to take proper measurement and uh, 3D technology might help in future. Virtual reality, CIMT, mirror therapy can be modified with tele neuro rehab and tele stroke is a very well accepted but it needs to merge with the tele rehab. So what are the challenges to digital rehab, data protection, regulatory requirement, inadequate training, cost and maintenance, difficulty in adopting, and lack of human touch in the digital program. But there can be inadequate training for the equipment use and it can be overcome by training the doctor, therapist, patient, exploit the digital potential of platform being used. One need to have data protection, can be easily solved by your IT team. But major barrier in adopting technology is uh, can be overcome by integrating between high income country which can provide the technical expertise and collaborate with LMI for 
the lower cost and India has come out with Make in India and this can be accomplished by collaboration with organization like WHO, WFNA, APNA, etc. So technology and neuro rehab is very challenging and COVID-19 has really taught us key, is, key now is home-based portable devices using AI like VR, robotic, etc. And future is holistic digital transformation of healthcare system, including appropriate response by authority, healthcare provider, and the insurance company. So digital transform is, transformation is one positive outcome of COVID-19, and it will continue to be part of our health system. So what are the future collaboration, and what is FPR and tele rehabilitation? So in developing country, there is a practice of staying joint family. India is very well known. Uh, there is the highest number of people, 185, living in one family, and which reduces the burden on a single member of family as well as reduces the cost of care. Education and counseling become easy. Uh, the social system and family structure help to provide the necessary physical, emotional, and spiritual support. Strong family bond, bond can overcome the negative impact of disability. And ensure the long-term care, saving their finance, and the role as therapy giver can be switched between family members who are present in the family. Before, much before the COVID, I wrote this paper in 2019, and you can go through that, that family-based rehabilitation is need of our in developing country. And it was very well written that uh, the tele rehabilitation or use of mobile phone along with the family could be the key for the future low-cost rehabilitation. And this is what is the basic of family-based rehabilitation and that Mr. Chan from Mizoram, 185 people living together, 16 wives and uh, grandchildren, children, everything. So those who cannot travel to rehab unit because of time, distance, finance, uncooperative patient, violent behavior, bedridden, family burden, old age, other patient who can be taken for the family-based rehabilitation. And one can consider FBR as an ideal rehabilitation because family is the focal point, the whole pain has been shared, the people switch the role, and there can be a debate between the CBR versus FBR. So CBR may be ideal in rural area where communities are working together. And you know, the head of the community could be the focal point, but FBR could be useful in cities and metro, where his family is the focal point, and two or three people are only there in the family. So a bridge between the two uh, in Indian context is uh, key, and it may be useful in many other developing countries. So where the evidence? These are some of the paper I will show you quickly. Efficacy of home-based tele rehab versus in clinical therapy for adult after stroke which is a randomized controlled trial, and there has been a significant improvement with the tele rehab. Eight and two trial, which is going to come, and this is a very important trial, again happening in India, and we are part of it. And this is a uh, images, video to demonstrate exercise to the patient caregiver, video conferencing, text information on stroke rehab, and reminder for exercise session on a daily basis. There are many platforms are available for tele-based family rehabilitation, which may be mobile-based, virtual reality-based, and this can be used in more community-based care. And this important paper highlights that how, after the stroke, so from acute to the chronic, that 12-month story in hospital versus home, and you could see that there's a significant improvement and regularity patient is doing when the rehab opportunity in home-based technology and assisted is given. So it is this important landmark that if the therapy is given at home, uh, is regular, much better effect and outcome in this. So family-based rehabilitation, community-based rehabilitation provides stable intervention by using the community and resources. FBR, CBR is uh, important and tele-rehab helps uh, to handle all the then there are robotic uh, devices for post-stroke home rehabilitation. And this paper, say three diamonds, uh, the home-based robot helps rehabilitation therapy in three diamonds with adaptive optimizes <coughs> patient recovery. How simple we can have the robot. And these are the Indian robots, which are very low cost. 
and Pluto is a plug and train robot for hand neuro rehab and this can easily be done you can see this uh, is the devices which can be done used for all the hand function it just you have to put it it has been tried in five state 10 plus hospital 100 plus clinic here, thousand plus patient and just cost less than two thousand dollars and these are very simple exercises this video which can tell you that patient can do it at home and we, this is the first indigen robot for home therapy, which is highly effective. So Pluto is something which you will hear more and more in the future. We have another evidence for tele-rehab in upper extremity in, in the GRMI robot concept and clinical results from China. And these are some of the new papers, tele-rehab using, using in-house wearable ankle rehabilitation robot for rolling. And of course, uh, tele-rehab for finger and wrist using the hand rehabilitation system and robotic hand. So these are some of the paper which says feasibility and utility of tele neuro rehab in India, which I think is very promising. And these are the challenges which I have already discussed. So to conclude, tele neuro rehabilitation was an unknown entity in India before COVID. Increased awareness of neuro rehabilitation will lead to more utilization of TR. Low cost cellular data services given opportunity to make it an integral part of follow-up services, need to infiltrate into the already existing government program. Challenge of data protection is important. Future is digital, particularly in developing country. And this is my summary. You can read that. It is daily rehabilitation is new learning for both patient, caregiver, and the therapist. And this is the future. And I'm sure those who are not doing it will force and need to do we have an annual conference and 2024 is from 12 to 14th April. You are most welcome to present your paper, come and attend. It will be very, very interesting. People from low middle income countries can join that. And of course, this slide you are seeing for the fourth, fifth time, the World Congress we already have in 23 to 25th May at Vancouver, Canada. All of you must try and join that. Thank you very much. Please, please put this hand to Professor Nima. This is a very uh, eye-opening lecture to me. Uh, this is uh, very uh, interesting in how you uh, explain the tele-rehabilitation uh, from the beginning and how the impact of of the tele rehabilitation uh, in Thailand, we also have a problem because uh, the patients and uh, the therapist is not match in the number, and um, uh, the, the problem is uh, the patient needs to pay uh, uh, how to come and is very obstacled. Uh, they need to um, overcome. So uh, the tele rehabilitation, uh, especially in neuro rehabilitation, I think is will be um, really the future for us. So uh, is there a any question from the floor for uh, Dr. Professor? Uh, for, for professor? Okay, so may maybe we keep it to, to uh, our uh, last. So uh, thank, thank you, Professor, thank you. again. Okay. Uh, next.